Welcome back to another Build Day Live video here at NetApp in Boulder. I'm Alistair Cook and joining me is Dean Steadman who is the product manager for HCI. But Dean, I wanted to drill into just one component and talk about the SolidFire heritage and feature set that underlies the software defined networking here. Uh, can you talk us through a little bit of the history and the thought thinking around and the functionality of that the operating system and, and platform? Yeah, when, when our team began working on NetApp HCI, we focused on the, our storage history as NetApp and wanted to make sure that we build in a lot of the features and functionality of SolidFire and be able to leverage that into this product line. So, of course, some of those key attributes of the SolidFire system are the data efficiencies that are in line to the storage process. So those start with deduplication and compression. Uh, those are always enabled on the SolidFire storage. Can they be disabled, or is it the, Actually, the entire architecture is predicated on it? It's, it's built into everything that happens, so there's no way to disable those. As data is actually written in, we mirror data between the two storage nodes uh, within a cluster. Uh, that data is, you know, is put into the deduplication engine before that mirror actually happens. So there is no way to disable that. Uh, but something that, that actually in some of the uh, industry scorecards that are out there, the ability to enable and disable deduplication is actually a, a ding against us that we can't turn it off. Um, but something that we're kind of proud of is knowing that those efficiencies, they mean so much to us and so much to our customers that we've, we've literally put those into the entire data path. And when they're so fundamental and core to the, the design, then they don't impede performance anywhere. It's not like they're added after the fact in order to fulfill one of those check marks on, on the assessment. Absolutely, yeah. And, and we, when you think about it from a performance perspective, uh, you know, most other storage systems out there do the, have those as an enable feature that does have a storage impact. For us, it's, it's not free, but it, it is considered free to have those on because they're just part of what we do. All of our data path is focused on us servicing customer data with one millisecond of latency or less. And so whenever we talk about storage performance in SolidFire, that's the, the target that we're always hitting. Deduplicated, compressed data with one millisecond of latency or better. So, so that delivers in incredible performance and application performance then. Yep. The other thing that SolidFire is, is well known for is the quality of service element, the ability to isolate out workloads. Can you talk a little bit about how that works and is used. Yeah, absolutely. So quality of service basically allows our customers to go through and set service level agreements with their business applications that are running against the storage. Um, those applicate or those service level agreements can be based on uh, an IOPS minimum and maximum as well as a burst amount of IO. So that really allows an administrator to go in and say for this given application it is always going to get this minimum amount of storage performance. It can have a maximum uh, that allows folks to put in uh, different type of quotas uh, within their storage systems. And then the burst allows for spontaneous you know, boot storms, startup processes, index jobs, those type of things. Allows applications to go above and beyond a little bit for, for a short amount of time. So I'd expect that maximum construct to be very important for service providers who are, who are charging customers for, for different service based on that. I don't imagine it's used a huge amount in the enterprise where it's, it's a sunk cost, there's no... Uh, differentiation of service, or do you see it differently? I, I see it differently. I think that, that we do have some customers that do, you know, do chargebacks to their business organizations, um, or actually work with engineering teams to make sure that they really uh, set those quotas so that folks know the amount of resources that they have and have that enforced, just to make sure that you don't have a noisy neighbor type of situation within it within a uh, shared environment. Especially when we use this in HCI, being able to guarantee those storage performance requirements. And as an administrator, as you're provisioning these systems, being able to calculate that maximum that you have lets you really plan ahead and lets you think about your infrastructure. And then all of our easy monitoring and, and management of the system allows folks to forecast that so they can see what their current storage is, how much of that they've or st current storage performance is, be able to provision that out and forecast when they're going to need to add more. That's the last thing about the solid fire system that we should really focus on is that scale out architecture, the ability to take new nodes and add those in. Even if those new nodes have different storage capacity, different performance characteristics, um, we have customers that have several different generations of our hardware, all living within the same cluster, all contributing resources to those storage workloads. And that's a fairly unusual 
uh, capability is to do a mix and match of generations of hardware inside that same cluster. Yeah, it, it's all about having a, allowing our customers to avoid those forklift upgrades. The last thing we would want to do is have to tell someone, you know, your storage system is five years old, it's time to throw it into the shredder. We want to be able to say, no, we'll add in new nodes over time, add new capabilities, increase your capacity, yeah. and as those new old, or those old nodes come off of maintenance and out of, out of support in the future, customers will just bring in new nodes and then slowly start retiring the ancient ones out at their own pace. And very much in the way we expect in an HCI solution of you add, add new nodes when you need more capacity, you, you subtract nodes when they become a liability because either their performance is inadequate or they're, uh, they're out of support and therefore failure risk. Correct, yep. Yeah, it allows customers to grow with the environment over time. And that quality of service, I think, plays really nicely in the HCI solution when you're building up multiple clusters off the HCI that it enables you to have that single storage cluster satisfying multiple um, compute clusters that have different requirements and different criticality rules. I presume you might see customers that have production and non-production sharing the same storage. Yeah, it's, it's not just production and non-production, but it's also two completely different production style workloads. So I was talking with one customer that has a very large uh, VDI infrastructure. They're a hospital they have hundreds uh, of uh, you know, systems throughout the hospital for nurse stations and those type of things. So being able to have the VDI workload and be able to have some set limits on that that give the right level of storage performance to those, those critical workloads, but then also have all their backend database reporting systems that are running billing and those type of operations. Being able to have those two workloads share the same storage system allows their team to have less infrastructure that they have to, to purchase and maintain but then allows them to actually set the limits to make sure that the performance requirements of both workload are met at all times. And of course, if they find that the um, cluster isn't delivering sufficient, well, is it at risk of not delivering sufficient performance, they can always scale it out further and get more performance as they're getting more capacity on that, that uh, storage cluster alone. Yeah, correct. And these quality of service limits are also dynamic. So customers can change them as their business requirements work. So, you know, if that reporting department suddenly becomes more critical and you need those SQL Server workloads to have a faster response time, they can increase the IOPS maximums, give that workload a little bit more overhead to, to run a little faster, um, yeah. or of course add in more nodes is always a good solution as well. And of course, there's a UI for this, but because of the origins with working with uh, service providers, it's an API first environment, so there's really good scripting and automation for doing those changes to QoS to match business policies. Yeah, that's correct. SolidFire has always been an API first solution. Our, our user interface is actually just a client on top of our API. So yeah, we, we focus on making it very simple for folks to use, but more importantly, simple for folks to use at scale. If you had a thousand of these nodes or you know hundreds of clusters, you're not gonna wanna log into the interface to make any kind of changes. Just do it all programmatically and, and get out of the way of the system. That's really nice. I've always had a lot of respect for the SolidFire solution since a bunch of my friends came and worked at SolidFire and I, I learned about it at, at those startup days. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Dean, for, for joining me for this video. And thank you for joining us for this video. Please stay tuned for more videos from the Build Day Live here at NetApp in Colorado.